Welcome to Let's Digitize with Leisha. Marchetta Gibson writes, What I am having problems finding out is how to import fonts into Palette 11. I have purchased several fonts and have no idea how to get them into my software. I've checked the Palette 11 user's manual as well as searching here on YouTube. I think it would be helpful to many people if you decide to make a tutorial video on importing or downloading fonts into Palette 11. Thank you. At the time she wrote this, the only way I knew of importing another digitizer's font was by importing them like individual files and painstakingly placing them in the design field. This is because after learning how to digitize, I never really played with other designers' fonts and simply used true type fonts. But after she asked, I decided to look into this because I knew there had to be an easier way and I figured it would involve using the font creator tool, which, to be honest, I haven't played with much. So that's what we're going to learn about today. Before we get started, I would like to remind you to like this video if you find it helpful, leave a comment if you have any questions, and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to set up your notification settings if you would like to be informed when I post new videos. For this video, I'm going to use this Harry Potter inspired font that I purchased years ago when I first got my embroidery machine, before I learned how to digitize. Because it was so long ago, I had to do some digging to find out that I purchased this from In Stitches Embroidery on Etsy. A link to the listing will be in the description below. The files are saved into their own folder, are all in PES format, and right now use the naming scheme that the digitizer assigned to them. This will be important later. To access the font creator, click on the options drop down in the top right hand corner of the screen and select Font Creator. This will open a new window with the font creator tools. You will notice that when it opens, it begins with a pop-up asking how big the font will be. If you know the size of the font, you can enter it here. I am just going to leave the size at 100 millimeters for now. It can always be adjusted later. You can also use the set standard font character height from embroidery file, but this will prompt you to open your files right away and I would like to show you how to access the files from the main area of the font creator so you can get an understanding of how it works. You will recognize most of the tools in the font creator from the main program, but today I am only going to show you how to import fonts from another digitizer. I will go into detail about how to use this feature to create your own fonts in a later video. Here is where you can choose which character you are working with. As you would expect, the program begins with the letter A by default. You can use these arrows to change the character you are working with. To the right of the character section is how you will import the files. You can import them in multiples and individually. This is where the naming scheme of your files becomes important. When you click on the Import Multiple tool, you will use this folder button to find the folder that contains the font you are importing. But if the files are not named correctly, they will not appear in this pop-up. If you do not rename the files, you will need to import each letter individually using the single import tool. As you can imagine, this is very time consuming as you will need to import all of the uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and any special characters individually. Instead, I recommend fixing the file names in the folder so that Palette will recognize the letters from the file name automatically. You will name the uppercase letters using the letter U for uppercase, underscore, and the letter that it is. You will name the lowercase letters with the letter L for lowercase, underscore, and the letter. It does not matter if the letters are uppercase or lowercase when you are naming them, but you must have an underscore and no spaces. Numbers can be saved as the number that they are, and if you have any special characters, which I don't, you will use this naming scheme. You can find this chart in the manual under Font Creator, Registering Embroidery Data, Batch Registration. I know that even this is time consuming, but it is much faster than individually importing all of the files. Once you have all of the names saved properly, you can now use the Multiple Imports tool. All of the files will now show in the preview. They should all be automatically selected. So just click import and the program will automatically assign the files as the proper character. To make sure that they are all imported properly, click the down arrow here to have an easy view of the letters that are added. If any letter is not highlighted, this means the program did not find a file associated with that character. Normally this is because the file name was not entered properly. Select the letter, then you can simply import single to add it. 
You will notice in the preview of my letters that I have quite a big space above the letter that is highlighted gray. This is because, as you will remember, I left my letter height set to 100 millimeters. To change this now, all I have to do is select standard character height. I can set the size manually, or as you can see below, I can select set size of the character being edited. This box shows the size of the current letter. To make sure that I don't cut off any letters that might be a little bigger than this one, I'm going to manually set the character height a little higher at 55 millimeters, just to be safe. And I'm going to press OK. Then I'm going to select yes that I'm changing the height. Now the preview shows the letter fitting snug in the highlighted areas. If you do not change this, you will end up with the font box being taller than the actual font when you go to use it in palette. Once you have all of the letters imported and the character height set, you can go ahead and save the font. Do not change where the files are being saved to, as this is automatically sent to save them where your palette program can retrieve them. Be sure to give the font a unique name so you can find it easily in the font drop down menu. Now you can easily use the font in palette. The font I imported will appear as a user mapped text because it has multiple colors associated with each letter. If your font was not more than one color, it should appear in the regular font dropdown after the included palette fonts and before the true type fonts. Just as a side note, when I open my palette program, if I try to use a user map text right away, I get an error. If this happens to you, close and reopen palette, click on the regular font tool, write something, and then you can use your user map text with no problems. Well, there you have it. Thanks to Marchetta for submitting the question, and thank you for watching. Once again, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to click the notification bell if you would like to be informed when I post new videos, and leave a comment if you have any questions. Bye for now!